you, you, when you look at financials, you got to look at multiple different aspects as well as your health and your business because Are regulators and MLM companies in cahoots? Hmm. Well, I'm going to cover that in today's video comments from an individual who's left a number of them. You know who you is. All right. Hey, my name is Lance McGowan with Essential Oils Me, and let's get right into it. Okay, so this person says, Lance, you're completely forgetting the MLM industry successfully fought to be exempt from the FTC's business opportunity rule, which applies to other business opportunities such as franchising. That rule mandates a cooling off period whereby applicants have time to reconsider their decision and conduct research. The MLMs stated that because their entry costs are so low, allowing time to research an opportunity would be overkill. As such, MLMs conduct an opportunity event after which immediately attendees are asked to sign up. In many cases, the MLMs don't even disclose their company name prior to these events to further prevent research. How can one research something without knowing the name or topic, MLM, in parentheses? In almost all cases, recruits discover what an MLM is long after they've signed up and paid their fee. Regulators appear to be okay with millions losing a few bucks, whereas they react when even a few lose large sums. MLM's goal is to profit approximately $250 to $500 from each recruit to stay below the threshold, bringing regulator attention. It's also the main reason MLMs are so dependent on recruiting. They can't increase the money lost figure, so they require volume to make up the difference. And that was their comments. And so the link will be in the description below. I also looked up the FTC rule. I mean, there's a lot that can be said about this. I think I'm going to summarize by saying, all right, so if you're holding more inventory than you're selling or using, that's a problem. If you're pressured to do so, that's a problem. If you attend an event, regardless of what it is, it could be for Robert Kiyosaki's financial advisor class, if you don't even know who it is or what you're attending it for, that's a problem. And the thing I'm trying to communicate or have tried or, you know, I've tried a lot <laughs> is we have to take personal responsibility for our own thoughts, words, and actions. When it comes to doing research on the company, the income disclosure statement, and the compensation plan, as well as the person, team, product, and company, in order to you know make a, a more educated decision, you know people buy emotionally and justify rationally anyway. So you know that's going to be limited. And to their point, well, if you don't know the name of the company, Lance, how can you look up all that stuff? Well, that's why you ask the person, and if they don't want to give that level of transparency, then that should be a red flag, right? You know, you, you could. You know, I, I invite people to a natural solutions class, right? And, uh, yeah, you, you kind of, I mean, one of, the, one of the reasons why you don't mention the company's name is because you don't want somebody to Google the name and then just go buy it because they have a need. Like, you want to educate them on the benefits and uses of the product, and a lot of companies focus a lot on the business opportunity, you know, like maybe 50% or more of the class, and some, like, when I teach a class for um, an essential oil class with doTERRA, like, it's typically, like, five to ten percent of the class is on the business opportunity it's just like it's covered but it's not a focus like the focus is really on powerful products teaching and sharing and that's more of a authentic network marketing business model versus what they were talking about on the recruiting side and what is talked about a lot on you know YouTube channels is more of a traditional or traditional network marketing approach where it's very focused on recruiting selling and the business opportunity and when you look at the numbers most people in a network marketing company are customers and a very small percent are business builders or distributors or wellness advocates or associates. You know, there's a lot of different names for it, but we'll just call them distributors because that's more of a broad term that covers more MLMs than more often than not. And to their point, a very small percent make real money and a lot of them lose money, <laughs> right? And I think it comes down to your perspective and trying to understand that when it comes to, again, network marketing companies, you shouldn't be buying more than you're using or selling. And if you're pressured to do so, then it's not sustainable. And we have to look at our profits and losses and look at the numbers as well, and what's coming in and what's coming out. And I know with some ranks, there may be some pressure to do so to maintain a rank, whether it be for our own selves or from other uplines or other people. And we just have to reevaluate if that's the type of culture we want to be a part of or not. And to be, you know, honest about that and communicate, you know, what our concerns are and stuff like that. And 
um, to the team and to the mentors we're with. So unlike them, I will admit MLMs, network marketing, they're not perfect. There's, there's people involved, and so whenever there's people, there's going to be problems, as Alan Godwin says in his book, How to Solve Your People Problems. But the key thing to remember is that more often than not, if they follow, especially if they follow a more authentic network marketing business model, it, it will be better than what you're going through because you'll be able to hopefully, I mean, and, and it follows a progression. I, I, so many times these anti-MLM people are like, I'm going from zero to 100 real quick, meaning I'm going from making no money to I better be making full-time income and replacing my job and I can leave it. When in reality, it should be like, how do I go from not knowing anything about this company to making a purchase, becoming a customer, a product of the product, using them for one, two, three years even. So you just have so many experiences and you understand the benefits and uses properly and how to order and how to handle things. You know, if shipping goes wrong, you know, you just have that as a customer. And that shows that you can be consistent in taking care of your health. And then maybe start a part-time business. And then a full-time, if it makes sense. Or you could do multiple part-time jobs or have a full-time job and a part-time network marketing business. And that's what they, it's almost like they have so much cognitive dissonance. They're just like, it's all or nothing and it has to be like this or it ain't good. And it's just like the idea of network marketing, and Eric Worre talks about this, is you have a full-time job or a part-time job or multiple part-time jobs and you are also a network marketing professional. Okay? And so you're able to use the products, be a product of the product. You're also to do that part-time and yes a smaller percent are able to do a network marketing business full-time okay that's the fact that's the reality they, they you know harp on that so much but they don't look at the root cause of why that is they don't focus on hey you can also have a full-time corporate franchise mom and pop job but then also have a part-time network marketing business they're like no you can't do that and even if you break even with your network marketing business after your monthly costs what you use and or sell and what you get compensated hey, you broke even. As long as your quality of life is improving, how about we include that in the conversation? What about quality of life enhancement, right? What about not just the money and the financials, but what about your health? What about your the relationships you have? So often, small business owners and or self-employed people focus so much on the money and keeping up with the Joneses and, and, and you know, I'm a numbers guy myself, so, you know. But at the same time, I recognize that balance is important and looking at the bigger picture. Right? quality of life and it's not just trying to keep up with the Joneses and press people with money we may or may not have and you know because we may not even like those people and you know throwing material possessions in a void just to have some type of temporary identity and get you know this and good jobs you know out of boys or out of girls it's just it's not worth it like we we need to have more purpose in life that's surrounded with helping ourselves helping our family helping others community the world and I think that's where it should start. Like, what are your intentions to help other people? And that goes against like the natural, prideful, selfish, you know, human nature. But it's important to consider, and it's not in the conversation. And they be, they may be like, look, that's out of scope. But I'm like, yes and no. All right. You, you, when you look at financials, you got to look at multiple different aspects as well as your health and your business. Because if your health isn't where it's at and where it needs to be, you can't make any money. If you're stuck on your bed because you're not feeling well. You can't, you're not going to be any use to society. You're going to be stuck on your bed. And hopefully you have something natural you can use, which is what I talk about on my channel. Check out videos you know, on that. Uh, shameless plug. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Anyways, that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click the like button if you did. Share this video with somebody that would benefit from it. And most importantly, check out the links in the description below so you can continue to get your learn on. And I will see you in the next video.